Why is the market busy? What is going on? We're supposed to have uh, economic collapse, destruction, all that good stuff. But the market's busy. People are making deals. I spoke to a developer's rep yesterday, and she informed me that they've done eight deals pre-construction in Toronto in a week. The average price is 1200 a foot on the small units, 11 on the medium units, 1200 a foot. You know, your typical 500 square feet, 600,000. Now, they don't have anything under 630 or 620, and those are the smallest uh, units, five and a change square feet. And people are buying them. The, real, the, the resale market is active. If you can get anything for $1,000 a foot in, 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 in downtown, you're very, very lucky. It's got to be like a really good deal because most units in King West, downtown, along uh, Young Bay Street, you're looking at 1,200 a foot, easy. What's 1,200 a foot? That means 500 square feet, 500 times 1,200 is $600,000. Okay, that's, that's what you're looking at. So, <laughs> why is that? Why are people making deals? Why is the resale market doing well? Why are developers selling out? Why, when the developer launches a building, there's 200 applications for each unit? What's going on here? Well, we got to look at the long term here and we got to look at how people's psychology works. If people believe that Toronto is a good place to live and everyone wants to come to live here and we need more beds, more rooms, more housing, then that's what they're going to do. They're going to come to Toronto or any other place they believe it's a good place to be and buy or rent units. If people believe that today maybe the situation is not the best, but overall Toronto is the place to be, then that's what's going to happen. If people say, well, the price is going up anyways because someone else is believing in the city and I believe in the city and they believe in the city and he and she and everyone, then that's what's going to happen. What you see is you see the people voting with their wallets on what they believe the economy and the housing market in Toronto is and everywhere else. So, do we need all these condos downtown if no one's going to be working downtown? Well, if we don't, where are all these people going to live? They're going to live somewhere. If they're actually going to work from home, they still got to live somewhere and they better have like high speed fiber so they can do Zoom meetings and send files and process stuff and really be connected to the matrix, the internet, each day, every day, all the time. <clears throat> but they still need a place to live and they still need a place to work. Now, if you're working from home and you're by yourself in 500 square feet, you can find yourself a little corner to work. But if you're a couple or a baby or you have a roommate or the place is busy with other things because, you know, you never intended on working from home and now your home is full with life stuff, where are you going to work? You still need space, okay? You need an office, at least a home office, something. And average condo, 500 square feet, that's, that's kind of hard because that, you know, you put your bed and a little dining table and maybe a little work table um, or a coffee table, a couch and a chair and you're done. And there's not a lot of space. 500 square feet, really, you know, your living room is 14 by 14 feet, 16 by 12, something like that. And the bedroom takes a little bit of space and the bathroom takes a little space and that's it. 500 is the gross. It's not your net. Okay, Terry on bullet in 22 if you want to learn how to measure units. But anyways, <clears throat> so what we're seeing here is the people voting with their money, the people voting with their psychology, the people voting with ideology. People are saying Toronto is a good place to live. We'd rather come to Toronto than other places. Now, yes, there's uh, more people moving to the country. It's summer. Of course, everyone loves to live in the country in the summer, but you go to Muskoka in the winter for a couple of weeks, a couple of days at minus 20, everything is iced and we'll see how long you, you last there. But you can come to the city and you have everything you need and it's not that cold here 
and you can you can get all your services all the time. So the future of humanity is still the urban. There's just so many of us, eight or nine billion, they can live in a country because there's just not enough. There's just not enough beds, not enough bedrooms, not enough uh, places to be. Okay. So there was a shock. There was a shock for a couple months where people didn't know what's going on. They sat on their hands and thought, what can I do? Let me see what's happening. And now summer is back. And even though July and August are usually uh, less on the volume, they're doing pretty good right now. So <clears throat> what's going to happen tomorrow, I don't know, but I know what's happening right now. And right now, people are voting with their wallets, with their money, with their savings, with their earnings, um, towards investing. They believe in the future of humanity. They believe in the future of the cities. And they see long-term. Investors are long-term, okay? 2008, the market kind of had a little blip. And it was a lot of drama, of course. There wasn't any... It was more of a financial thing than anything. The NASDAQ, the tech, was a bit overheated because all these dot-coms, if you remember that. And it took six or eight months, it came back. Um, one could argue that the prices are low now, but I don't think they are. I think they just overheated a little bit at the months previous. The average uh, selling for Toronto right now at uh, Condos.ca is about 818. 818, that's the average at condos.ca calculated. And that's pretty high. That's higher than last year's average. We're still above last year's average, which was around 730, 780, around there. Okay, so much higher. Now, the question is, of course, and go to the condo calculator and, and use it because it will tell you Put a condo in, put just a demi unit, 500 square feet, at 1200 square feet, at 1200 foot, that's 600,000, that's your 20% down, 120, so it'll calculate the 480 mortgage for you, give you an estimate for the mortgage, the condo fees, the taxes, and the carrying costs, how much it costs per month for the unit. Now the question is, would someone pay you the rent for that unit? And let's say the answer is no. They, let's say you need uh, 2500 buck a month to cover for your costs, but the renter only you only got a renter for 2000 okay? So 500 out of your pocket coming out. <clears throat> Overall, uh, another uh, fellow agent reminds me that you're still putting into your capital at least that amount every month. So you're still theoretically breaking even. Obviously, you're not realizing the money until you sold it. If it's a rental income, you pay tax on it, you know. But overall, investors are still feeling comfortable because these are the numbers. Now, if you want to break even on your rent, cash on cash, you need to buy cheaper. You need to have higher income. Or you can put more money down. Okay? More money down. So instead of 20%, you put 30 or 40 or 50 or 100%. If you put 100% down on a $600,000 condo, which is 500 square feet, all you left to pay every month is uh, the condo fees and the taxes. These are your carrying costs. The tenant will pay the hydro. So <clears throat> let's say your taxes cost you about two fifty a month for the little unit, and the condo fee fees about four hundred, six fifty, something like that, and you get two thousand for the unit. You're getting third, say about thirteen hundred, thirteen fifty a month, positive cash flow from that unit, assuming you bought it for cash, paid all out. Okay. They also reduce some of your transaction. Uh, cost because you have to do a mortgage which has its own fees and costs. So now you're collecting 1300 1400 a month <clears throat> times 12, 16,000, maybe 18,000, maybe 20,000 if it's a little more a year. That's what you're collecting pre tax and you paid uh, 600,000. So you're looking at you know two to three percent. You can probably work the numbers a little better. Of course, if you have a loan, your ROI gets much, much higher because ROI, return on investment, if your investment is lower because you didn't pay the whole 600000 you only paid 120 or 200000 then that percentage comes way, way up. So it depends on your perspective and how you look at the numbers. Nonetheless, the market is active, lots and lots of transactions. My phone's ringing every day. I get at least two, maybe three people call me 
want to invest for the kids, want to invest for themselves, want to invest for the retirement, don't trust the monetary system, the financial system. So that's why people invest in real estate. You know, there's, there's a few things that will never change. Human Humans, they need roof, shelter, they need food, they need water, they need medical stuff, they need a doctor, they need a teacher, someone to put them in the ground when they're done. Okay, so these are the basics of, of human existence. <clears throat> That's why humans always been obsessed with housing. It's the very, very bottom of the Maslow pyramid. Your basic needs are the very, very bottom. Food and shelter. And it goes up from there. So <clears throat> I'm way more optimistic than I was a month ago, even a couple weeks ago. Obviously, we got a long way to go couple of years in my opinion so plan for the long term there's a lot of people that are cheering the market up and cheering the market down but I think the real thing to do the smart thing to do the responsible thing to do is to look take a good look at the long term what's going on I mean humanity has been faced many many challenges in its many thousands of years of existence this is not the first time that humanity has to face a challenge it's only it's the first time that we all do it all over our phones over social media arguing with each other discussing with each other it's fine we're gonna come better out of this we're gonna have we're gonna look at our values as society our values life values what do we appreciate what are we considered important all these things but you know everyone needs a home the markets are busy if the price goes a little up, a little down, it doesn't really matter because we live in an inflationary economy and so much money being printed. Money could be worthless tomorrow, but a house is not, a condo is not, roof is not. Ability to care for yourself is always number one. Take care.